We're going to investigate in this video how the chi-square influences a peak model. And we're going to do this using a set of synthetic data that has been created from a set of four component peaks and a linear background. So we have now got a, a spectrum that looks like a carbon 1s and it, we know exactly what is within these data so we ought to be able to reproduce this quite nicely based on uh, generating a peak model with four components and a linear background. So this is what we'll do, we'll introduce a linear background, we'll create a set of four components and we will fit these against the data and in the first instance the line shape is not quite the same as the one used to create the data so we have a slight perturbation to the system based on the line shape so now if we fit this we obtain a chi-square and because the line shape isn't exactly the one that was used we don't get exactly a residual standard deviation of unity but nevertheless it's a pretty good standard deviation so let's do a comparison and see how how well we did and the answer is well we did reasonably well but it was not as well as the s standard devi deviation would suggest so now let's introduce the original line shape and fit again and now we have good precision uh, this is not unexpected so how well did the peak fit do again not particularly well even though the residual standard deviation suggests that we really have done quite a good job now we can even start to improve this residual standard deviation this option allows you to move fix a peak position and then just move it slightly and refit so what we're doing is holding the shift key down and then we're clicking the left and right mouse buttons to move the peak and refit the data and the idea is that we should come up with a, a better residual standard deviation and, th and therefore hopefully a better peak model. So we can go about this and then again we do the comparison and again no we did not get the original peak model back. So this should give you a cause for concern and now if we set this problem up again and this time we're going to introduce not the LF line shape that was used to create the data we're going to add a new line shape that will be a GL form and that's not an uncommon line shape that's used in peak fitting and let's see how well this peak model responds when fitted to these data using a completely different well it's not completely different it's a it's a blend of a Lorentzian and a Gaussian which is what an LF line shape is the LF line shape is actually a convolution of a Lorentzian and a Gaussian. This one is a mathematical functional form and when we do the fit again fantastic residual standard deviation it should be about one and it's come up slightly slightly better than one but the peak model itself is, is rubbish there's nothing here that would be useful in terms of physics or chemistry so perhaps it was just a starting point so we'll try a, a different starting point and no we've come up with once again a good residual standard deviation it's gone back to this shape so the the line shape has influenced the outcome for the peak model it's not the one that we know it to be and it has had a significant effect on the outcome so now if we go to a GL30 and this is another slight variation on a theme but this time what we'll do is we'll introduce some of the information we know about the, the peaks and C and D both should be about well in fact are precisely the same uh, area and we've got again come up with a good residual standard deviation it's improved over the GL50 without constraints so you introduce constraints to improve the quality of your peak fit but it's very very difficult to come up with the right answer based on the residual standard deviation in fact the Monte Carlo method for looking at error analysis indicated this peak model was in fact really quite bad